UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, joined as always by Allison Taylor. A lot of things going on on the Westwood campus. Students are back in school and things are starting to get going. And one of the new people who's joined the UCLA family is going to join us in just a few minutes. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Running an athletic department at the Division I level is a big operation and it takes a lot of people behind the scenes. Money is very important and development of donor sources is incredibly important. UCLA is very lucky to have a nice, quiet, shy, unassuming guy who's just joined UCLA as an Associate Athletic Director of Development, Josh Rebholtz. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Tell us how you got involved with the Bruins. I got the opportunity this summer. I was in Orlando at our annual Athletic Directors Conference and I uh, was good friends with a couple of former guys that used to be here, Ross Bjork being one of them. Uh, he mentioned that Dan and Mark had a position uh, here at UCLA and, and asked if I'd be interested and, and uh, we had a long talk, Ross and I, about UCLA and all the great things that go on here. Obviously I know being a, a college f uh, fan and, and growing up around college athletics, the history and tradition that UCLA has. And so when I got the opportunity to visit with Mark Harlan and then uh, come out here on an interview, obviously. It was such a great opportunity for me that, that when Mark called and said, we'd like you to come to, to Westwood, he said, you want to think about it? And I said, absolutely not. I'm ready to come right now. <laughs> so so uh, that's how I got here, and it, it's been great, great thus far. You have a lot of responsibilities. You've got a number of major funds that you are in charge of, plus cultivating relationships with donors. How do you approach your daily activities doing this job? You know, um, time management is very important. Uh, we have only so many hours in the day and, and we have a lot of meetings when you're at a university and, and you have a, a big large uh, athletic department with a lot of different moving pieces you have to visit with a lot of folks and you have to make sure that, uh, that people are engaged and you communicate well within, within uh, one another. And then we have a large staff that I oversee so obviously I've got to make sure that I give them the time that they need to be able to um, uh, follow up with things and answer questions that they might have and then the biggest part of my job is going out and seeing, seeing the donors and so I've got to make time to get out. A lot of times this job is something that happens you know at night or in the mornings you get up and have coffee with somebody or you stay late and you go out to dinner with with donors. Um, so time management is very important to us but also making sure that um, making sure that you take time for yourself personally because you don't want to get bogged down too much. Um, but we, we, uh, we do a good job. We have a great staff. Uh, we have a great support staff that makes sure that, that I'm where I need to be when I need to be there. And, and then uh, uh, we have a, a great team put together that we have help each other and we work with each other to make sure that we can we can do all that we can to help help the student athletes at UCLA. 
Josh, with your new position here, can you tell us what some of your personal goals are and what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced so far in your job? Yeah, um, personal goals wise, uh, I'm, I'm big into challenges. And, and one, of the, one of the great things about UCLA is it's had some unbelievable success, obviously. Uh, the best athletic department in the country. You know, it has the most championships and all the great history and tradition. Um, but it's got some great challenges fundraising wise. It's, it's kind of in its infant stages. We had such great support for so long and now we have to le rely on our donors and our fans more and more every year. And as tuition costs increase, as uh, coaches' salaries increase, as just overall uh, budgetary needs increase, uh, we've got to step up as, as fundraisers and make sure that we're filling the gap. And so our challenge is uh, primarily Primarily right now is to fulfill the uh, the poly campaign. That's the biggest thing that we're doing. Uh, the the 135 million dollar renovation. We all know about that. Uh, we have 100 million private uh, in private gifts that we need to raise, and we've we've made a great impact on that number. Um, but we've got uh, still a little bit to go before we open the building in in next November. So uh, that's the short term. We've got to get that done. Um, uh, we've got to make sure that. Um, that our donors feel appreciated, and that's the biggest challenge. Um, when you have a large institution with a lot of people and a lot of alumni, sometimes they can feel a little bit lost and unappreciated. And so we need to make sure with our staff that we're reaching out to folks, we see them on a regular basis, we f follow up with phone calls, uh, thank you cards, my staff will laugh about that. I'm big into to sending personal thank you notes. I think it's important that people feel appreciated no matter how much they give, large or, or small, that they, that they know they make a difference. You were a student athlete at the collegiate level. Can you tell us a little bit about how your experience as a student athlete has helped shape your approach to development? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, for for me, it's it's obviously it's allowed me to understand. Um, what the student athletes go through on a daily basis, whether and I know football and men's basketball are, are primarily uh, featured, you know, nationally, and so most people know about them and know about the kids. But I had an opportunity. I've had an opportunity to to throughout my time in this profession to go to golf tournaments and follow the golf teams, and and the 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 efforts that they put in, not only academically, they're going to school and they're working and they're practicing, but then they go out and play, you know, 36 holes and they're carrying their bag and they're walking up and down a golf course. I mean, it's unbelievable what they do and, and, and the time that they commit to, 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 to UCLA and to their own per, uh, personal goals and academically and, and athletically. So as a former student athlete, I think it's been a great example for me to understand what they've gone through and then that makes it even more important for me to, to help them uh, have the resources they need to be as successful as possible. Uh, the second thing is for me is as far as this, uh, we need to make sure that our student athletes also understand where their support comes from. I know when I was going to college, I got a stipend and I got a scholarship check and I'd pick up my check every month and I'd you know be excited for that, but I didn't necessarily know where that came from. I just figured it was part of me playing football and that's what it was. Well, every time I come in contact with one of our student athletes and I'm with a donor, I make sure to let them know that this is who supports you to go to school and this is who pays your uh, academic bills. And, and it's amazing to see the look in their face when they look at the donor and say, wow, that, I had no idea. And, and then they're so gracious and they're so thankful. So twofold, I think it's very important that, that I had the background in that and I, and I think it allows me to get a full understanding of what we do on a daily basis. Tell us about your association on a national level. You were involved in some organizations of development professionals. Sure. Yeah, I got elected um, this past summer, uh, really honored, I got elected to the National Association of Athletic Development Directors, NAD for short. It's a sub, uh, sub uh, committee of NACTA, which actually our athletic director, Dan Guerrero, is the president of now. And that's a, that's a great accomplishment for him. I feel very honored. I represent UCLA, um, obviously, for our, uh, you know, our development initiatives and our policies, procedures. I bring those to the national level. We talk about those. It's a 13-member committee from all over the country, some of the best and the brightest, and I'm just honored to be a, a, around them and learn from them. And it's a great opportunity for me to give back. When I was coming up in the business, so many young people want to be in, in athletics and, and athletic administration, um, and they don't know how to get to where they want to be. Um, so it's a great opportunity for me to mentor some young people. It's a great opportunity for me to um, develop new ideas to bring back to UCLA, and it gives me a great appreciation for our business. So. Very honored to be on that committee, and uh, it's a three-year term, and uh, and I'm hopeful that I can, um, you know, make a difference for that organization while making sure that I, I bring a lot back to UCLA and, and do a lot here. You mentioned the Poly Pavilion renovation, and the campaign of champions is underway. That's probably a good way to reach out to people that really haven't been involved in supporting the UCLA athletic program. It's a very high-profile project. It is absolutely, and. 
You know, when it comes to Poly Pavilion, it, it is the most storied uh, college basketball arena and, and facility in the country. And um, everybody knows Poly Pavilion, whether you live in uh, here in Westwood or if you live in New York City. I mean, you know it, you've heard of it. Um, and, and the history and the tradition of that building is so special. And it has allowed us to engage a lot of people that not just aren't maybe not basketball fans, but they're, they're, they're fans of UCLA, they're supporters of UCLA, and they understand the importance of the building. And obviously, we have volleyball and gymnastics in there. And, and, and other things go on in that building. So it is, it's, it's the crown jewel of this, uh, of this uh, campus. Um, it's, it's certainly the most famous building on campus as far as a national scale. So we have been able to engage a lot of people and get them excited about giving back. And, and while it's been a great four years, I know coming in, I'm late in the game and we're kind of trying to finish this thing out. Um, over the last four years, I know Ross and Sean and all the people and Dan and everybody that have been a part of this has worked really hard to get to where we are now, and now we just got to finish it strong. We were talking before the show about Twitter, and you are a notorious tweeter. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit how you plan to integrate social media into development to boost awareness and fund fundraising, especially for the Bruin Athletic Fund? Sure. I think, you know, Twitter has been something fun for me. We had a social media initiative at the University of Wyoming when, when, during my time there. We really implemented it, and one of the things I didn't know much about. I was never a Facebooker. I didn't, or whatever that is, you know, I never thought that was that important personally, but professionally, it's, it's a way to engage so many fans. And it is, especially for the younger generation, it's such a way to communicate with them. And that's what they're used to. That's what they do. So I got uh, introduced to Twitter a couple years ago. I started an account and it, and it became kind of this fun thing for me. And, and now um, I really enjoy it because I do it. There's two reasons for it. One, it's professional, um, making sure that uh, our fans kind of see the backside of what we do, uh, the interior of our business. When we go on the road and I can take a photo of, of people getting on the team plane or, you know, let people know when we're leaving the team hotel or, you know, any kind of initiatives and procedures that we go through on a daily basis that a lot of our fans and supporters don't necessarily know about. It's a great way to get that information out in a quick, easy, fun kind of way. And what is your Twitter account so people can it's, follow? It's, uh, oh, thank you. I'm going to get tons of new followers, I'm sure. Uh, at Josh Rebholtz UCLA is my uh, Twitter name. And then at Wooden Athletic Fund is, and at Bruin Varsity Club, BVCC um, is the, the other ones. But yeah, we, we have a lot of fun with it. And I know Allison's on there. And we and it's, it's like I know her life and she knows mine. So <laughs> And of course, there are going to be a lot of tweets about Bruin talking on there, right? There will be plenty of, to of tweets. I am going to tweet. I'm probably going to try to sneak a tweet in during this interview, which would be really <laughs> difficult. Uh, Josh, when you come to UCLA, it, it's a big place, as you mentioned. What, what was the initial challenge when you got here, learning your way around? Yeah, you know, it's a great campus. Uh, it is new to me, and, and there's good and bad to that. I mean, obviously, the history and tradition that UCLA has, um, there's so many great former uh, athletes, that, student athletes that have come through here. There's so many great alumni. Um, there's so many great supporters and professors and administrators that have come through here. I've got to do my due diligence to research as much as I can because I am a representative of UCLA. I always, um, I've been at several schools and I've been a lot of different places and obviously I'm not a, uh, an alum of UCLA. Uh, no way would I have ever gotten into school here, I know that. <laughs> um, but I know that um, I've got to be a representative and I've got to understand the, hit, the past to to, to know where we want to go in the future. While I think it's important that you have internal people that are UCLA, you know, born and, and bled, uh, I think that's very important. It's also important to have an outside approach too. I've seen things happen in a lot of different places and University of Missouri was the most applicable place uh, to here and the way they do it in the Big 12 compared to how they do it in the Pac-12. Um, I've been able to look at those, um, those uh, different initiatives and, and, and ways that they fundraise and bring that out here. And so I think we can adapt it, make it, uh, make it relevant to UCLA. But I do think it's important that I understand that I understand the past. And, and as much as I know about so many of the student athletes that have come through here just because they're so nationally known, there's so many more people I want to learn about and know about. And every day I'm just, I'm just so impressed by all the interesting tidbits of who came through here or what was invented here or what's going on campus, you know, uh, academically. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. He's a natural for the job. Josh, welcome to UCLA. Thanks, guys. And we'll be back with more UCLA Bruin Talk right after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UC.
UCLA. Champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. It's now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Caitlin Rowland of the women's soccer team as our Student Athlete of the Week. In Pac-12 play versus Oregon and Oregon State, Caitlin notched two shutout victories, both 1-0 wins over the Ducks and the Beavers. A freshman, Caitlin has stepped into goal in place of teammate Shantae Sandiford, who went down early in the season with an injury. We look forward to seeing more big play out of this young star. Congratulations, Caitlin, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. One of the most successful programs on campus also has one of the most demanding schedules on campus. They're already hard at it. They won't finish their season until the end of May, but they're out working every day. It's the men's tennis team. We're very happy to be joined by junior Warren Hardy and head coach Billy Martin. Coach, here we go again. Yeah, another year. Uh, we talked about the long schedule. What challenges does that pose to you, knowing that you're going now all the way till the end of the year? Well, I think there's a lot of sports, especially the Olympic sports, that do that. I mean, our off-season is the fall, but as you said, we're practicing every day. We're playing some individual tournaments to help the guys for their individual singles and doubles rankings. Since we have not only an NCAA team championship, but an individual singles and doubles championship. So these tournaments in the fall really help them for their ranking and really help maybe get them to qualify for that final singles and doubles tournament. But it's a good time for us also to really do some changes in the players uh, as far as maybe some technique, grip changes, whatever it might be coaching wise that you really don't want to do during the middle of the season in January or through May. We want them to win then. Now's the time to, to change a few things, maybe get them to, you know, maybe be a little uncomfortable with those changes but ready to, you know, start uh, in January with those changes somewhat uh, feeling good. Warren, you're coming off a nice quarterfinal appearance in the beautiful NorCal tournament up at the Meadowood Resort yeah. in Napa. That was a nice place, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great place. Well, you, you played a, a year at Penn State, and then you transferred to UCLA, now in your second year here. It's got to be a lot different training in the fall, being able to play outside instead of being inside, as you have to be in, when you're in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's, it's a lot nicer to um, be able to play outside full, full time, because as you know, um, the NCAAs are also outside, so you really get you know, a good, good feel for the outdoors, the sun, the wind, you know, pretty much that whole outdoor you know, playing. And um, you know, it's, it's kind of a different, different feel, and so it's really helpful. Warren, Dave mentioned how long and sometimes grueling the tennis season can be. You're playing almost throughout the entire school year. How do you keep your mental edge locked in over that long period of time? Well, you know, it's good that we have the fall. Um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be our downtime, but we get to, you know, play the individual tournaments. So it's really good for kind of a confidence booster, kind of changing and kind of getting mentally prepared, I feel, um, more for the season. You're kind of building up for that point so you know that when the season comes, you'll be strong and ready to go. So the fall is, is kind of a good way to build up that mental, you know, edge. Billy, you you had a really young team last year. Those players all have a little more experience now. How does that shape what you're doing with the team as you prepare for the new season? Well, yes, that was by far the youngest team I've ever had here at UCLA in my 29 years. Uh, it really probably was as good a year as we ever had with freshmen at one, three, and four. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Yes, they'll be better this year. We've got some other great freshmen coming in. Uh, we lost three good seniors uh, from last year's team, but we get Nick Meister back, who really probably would have been our number one player, by far our best doubles player. I had hip surgery in December, was out the whole season. He's gotten his fifth year back, so that'll be a real plus for us. But again, two young um, uh, freshmen will really help us. Big disappointment was losing Daniel Kozakowski, our freshman that played number one last Decided year. Decided to go pro. Yeah, gosh, that was really disappointing. From a coaching standpoint, of course, we wish him the best, and I think he's going to have a great future. Just wish he had maybe given us one more year here in uh, in Westwood. But, uh, you know, that that probably caught me a little bit off guard. I, I didn't think maybe he'd, he'd leave quite so soon. Another year might have matured him, but again, he's really eager, probably as hard a worker as I've ever had here at UCLA so but uh, we'll still be a pretty young team but I think probably more experienced than last year. Two newcomers are Marcus Hiron and Dennis Burkechian. Tell us about these new additions to the program. Yeah. 
both both Southern Cal juniors. Uh, got to watch them play quite a bit. In fact, Marcus uh, uh, played my son in junior tennis uh, as like a 10, 11 year older. So I've really gotten to see him more so than Dennis. But uh, both, you know, probably one and two in Southern Cal. Great, uh, great recruits for us to get. Good guys, good team guys. Uh, probably Marcus had a little better summer than Dennis. Dennis was injured a little bit last year. Marcus is coming off a, a very, very good summer, probably top one or two in the country uh, besides being a top Southern Cal junior. But Marcus, I think, will definitely play in our lineup somewhere in our top six. Let him decide that. And that's also what's so good for us in the fall from a coaching standpoint. The pecking order kind of gets, uh, you know, done not so much from coach's standpoint, but from how the guys do result-wise during the fall and challenge matches and all. Because uh, my D-Day is always that day before the first dual match in January where I have to go in that room and, and give the kids a lineup one through six. And there's usually one or two guys maybe happy. The rest are, are not maybe quite as happy as the others. Warren, you're obviously passionate about playing tennis, but do you enjoy watching tennis? Do you have a player on the Pro Tour that you particularly enjoy to watch? Um, you know, it's kind of it fluctuates a lot, you know, kind of with the years. You know, some years different players do well, but right now, obviously, everyone's liking Djokovic because he's, uh, you know, doing big things and uh, being pretty dominant on the circuit. So I actually really enjoy watching him. I think he's really inspiring to watch, and he's uh, been doing, doing really well on the, on the circuit. We mentioned that you're a junior coming back now, first time you've returned to a school. Tell us how different it is coming back, being familiar with the surroundings, with the guys, with the coach. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really nice actually. You know, you come back, you kind of feel like you've got a year under your belt. You kind of, you feel like you can, you teach to the, you know, the freshmen and um, kind of the newcomers kind of the ropes and uh, hopefully like, you know, give some of your wisdom down to them so they can, you know, play better, make some better decisions. And you just, I feel a lot more confident on the court as well because I kind of get the jitters out, you're ready to go, and, um, you know, it's just the confidence levels way up there. Coach, is there one tournament that you think your team is particularly excited about? Well, yeah, I think the regional championships that we play over at Pepperdine this year is, is always sort of a big fall tournament for us. It incorporates all the top teams from Southern Cal. We'll have SC there, Pepperdine, all the San Diego teams. Uh, it really gives us a good feel to see where the other teams are with their strength. We'll see their young freshmen. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, I'm almost more interested in seeing the other schools and the other players than maybe our own guys. I know them well enough. I certainly hope they do well, but uh, looking at the other talent, and trying to scout out, especially the teams that we're going to have to play this year in dual matches. Coach, singles were real strong last year, and of course when you're putting singles lineups together, you got ladders and you're doing all kinds of things during practice. But how about doubles combinations? Do you use this time of year to start looking at doubles combinations, or do you have a pretty good idea of, of what's going to be the, the team? Well, I think I have a pretty good idea, but I'm generally uh, mistaken most of the time. Losing Nick Meister last year just really hurt us in doubles, because I thought we were going to probably be a little weaker team in doubles last year, but when we lost him, it, it really hurt us. Uh, with him coming back, I think that's going to really help us. Warren had a fantastic year last year helping us in the doubles. Uh, so I will certainly try some different teams. We have have Alex Brigham and Adrian Puget, who played number one for us at the end of the year, coming back, ranked number eighth uh, in the preseason ranking. So obviously they're going to be a pretty good team. We'd like to keep them together if at all possible, but we've got to still make sure we got two good teams and chemistry is so important. It could look great you know, on paper and you think they're going to play well together and they just don't click with the chemistry. So that's always important and that is what we can kind of find out in the fall, quite honestly. Warren, um, what do the players do, you yourself or your friends do over the summer to make sure that when you do come to school in the fall, you're ready to go, you're in shape, what kind of workouts are you doing? over the summer? Well, you know, a lot of us, there's a lot of these pro, uh, pro futures tournaments and, you know, other men's open tournaments, which are, you know, separate from the NCAA. And um, they have them all throughout summer kind of scattered, scattered about. And uh, a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of guys on the team, a lot of guys on other teams, they all play these tournaments. So there's actually some very good competition in the summer. You know, I, I feel like everyone's still working just as hard. It's kind of a year round um, process and, uh, you know, good experience and you get, you know, it's kind of, you get to play with some weight off your shoulders as well because you know you're kind of playing for yourself but at the same time you want to do very well so those are kind of the tournaments that uh, most of the, the college players are playing. 
Do you get a chance to really scout out the guys you're going to be playing against in the college season? The pro tours, the guys know each other. They know their tendencies. How, how about your preparation for playing someone that you may never have played before? Well, a lot of the time, um, either the coach um, or you know other players on your team have played you know the the guy you're going to play or vice versa. So they, if you haven't played him before, they will usually give you a pretty good um, you know feel or you know, idea of what he plays like, what you want to do against him. And uh, you know, otherwise, you've you've either I've heard of a lot of these guys, uh, maybe not the foreigners as much, but by most of the time, you got a pretty good idea of what you're going up against, uh, which is which is really good. Coach, everybody has the image of the football coach sitting at you know midnight with the film reel rolling. I don't know if they still use film, but mapping plays. How do you, as a coach, help prepare your guys for the upcoming matches and the upcoming opponents? Yeah, well, as Warren alluded to, we certainly generally have gotten to watch a bunch of the players play. But there's always a foreign kid or a freshman that we have not. Uh, maybe I'll talk to another coach, but really we don't do a lot of film or anything like that. But uh, word of mouth and by. A, the time a player gets to be a junior or senior, you've generally seen him, you know, umpteen times, and you, you got a good, good feel for him. But the, on the other side, most of the coaches have been able to watch our players, so they have a great feel. So, it comes down to there's there's usually not that much secrets or secret weapons, or you don't know the players once they get to their junior senior year. What can spectators expect from the Bruins this season? Who's going to be your biggest competition? Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys expect for the for the year. Well, I expect the Pac-12 to be very, very strong again. We're going against uh, USC, three-time defending uh, NCAA champion, and they're going to be awful good uh, again this year. They lost two good players, but got some good recruits also. Stevie Johnson, the defending NCAA singles champion, is back for his senior year. We were hoping he'd probably turn pro, and he, he ended up not doing that. So uh, they kept theirs. We lost our number one player. Uh, Stanford's going to be awful good again this year. Uh, I think uh, the, the Cal team, which was probably their strongest year uh, last year in many, many years, is going to be very good again. So in our Pac-12, uh, <laughs> it's going to be very strong. But n nationally, I think Virginia is going to be very good. They've been very, very dominant the last five, six years. Uh, Georgia, where the NCAA is being held this year, is going to be very good. So I think the parity, as it has been for the last eight to ten years, is going to be pretty strong. But I think you can count on the Bruins being right there battling for an NCAA championship. And you have an opportunity to see elite, world-class players play at a world-class facility, the LA Tennis Center on the campus of UCLA. Guys, we look forward to a great season. Thanks for joining us on Bruin Talk. Thanks for thank having you. us. And thank you for having us. Allison and I will be back next week with another great show. Until then, so long from Westwood. <laughs>